Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna continue with a little bit more beta flight, revisiting the power and battery tab. When I originally did this video, I did not get into a tremendous amount of detail on how to calibrate your VBAT voltage and also your milliamp consumption. Because of this, I actually got quite a bit of hate on that video, people saying that I didn't explain things enough. Well, today we're gonna take care of that. I'm gonna show you how to calibrate your battery voltage and also how to dial in your milliamp consumption. With Betaflight open and our quad connected, I'm just simply gonna head right on over to our power and battery tab. And here's all our goodness that we're gonna use to properly calibrate our battery stuff. Right here on top, we're gonna tell Betaflight where we're getting the information that our quadcopter is gonna utilize. Our first item here is our voltage meter source. In most cases, you're just simply gonna leave this as on board. Most modern controllers, have a voltage sensor built right into them, so all we have to do is calibrate it. Right underneath that, you're gonna see that we have current meter source. And again, most modern flight controllers are simply gonna use on board. In many, many cases, even if you're using a four in one ESC, you're still gonna use the onboard sensor. If we click down on this, you'll see we have a few other options. We can say none, well, we don't want none because we want this to work. We have virtual, which you can kind of set up beta flight to do a guesstimate for the milliamps that have been consumed. Personally, I don't recommend using this. I think you'd be better off with a timer and just using VBAT because this can be like way, way off and completely inaccurate. Next, we can utilize an ESC sensor. So if you have 32-bit ESCs and you have telemetry set up, you could use the sensors on the individual ESCs. Same deal with the 4-in-1 ESC. If it has telemetry, you could also utilize that sensor by selecting ESC sensor here. Our last item is the MSP sensor, OSD Slave. This would be if you had like a third party board, maybe one of those fancy Impulse RC PDBs that's got like all the goodness built into it, uh, then you would select this particular option. But the vast majority of you are simply going to use the onboard ADC not only is it going to work fine, but that's really all we need. Okay, so we picked our sensor type. Now, let's get into the calibration. I have already calibrated my voltage and my amperage meter on here, so you'll see that my numbers look a little bit different from standard Betaflight, but that's okay. I'm going to show you my techniques and how I actually come up with these numbers. Let's start with the battery voltage. I'm going to go ahead and plug my quadcopter in. And once it's done with the boot racket, Okay, are you done? Okay, now I think we're ready. In order to calibrate our voltage, probably one of the first things we're gonna wanna look at is right here next to our battery, we're gonna have a number and this is the voltage that Betaflight thinks your battery is at. And well, this is essentially what we need to adjust using the scale right here. I've never really had to change the divider or the multiplier here. These two settings are usually pretty consistent and accurate. Uh, and in most cases, a lot of flight controllers, you're not even going to have to deviate from the standard 110 on the scale unless you like absolutely want to dial it in those couple of milliamps. But really out of the box, in most cases, the scale at 110 on here is going to be completely fine. But we want to do a little bit better than that. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to fire up my handy multimeter. And with it set to DC volts, in this case I'm at 20 volts because this is the range we need to have the meter set at. Yours might vary a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to find a probe point on the quad that is going to show us our battery voltage. Here on these builds, because I've got the XT60 kicked out to the side like this, it's relatively simple to get in here and read the voltage. And what I want to do is just simply compare the voltage on the meter versus where Betaflight thinks it is. And if I get a good connection on here, it is important to get a good connection. Right now my battery voltage is 15.32. Betaflight thinks we're at 15.2. That's pretty darn close. I could maybe bump up the scale by one number on here. Uh, let's save this. And let's see what Betaflight thinks now. So right now it's reading, you know, a high 15.2, low 15.3-ish. Let's probe these leads good. And right now we're pretty much 
you know, 15-3-2 here. Beta Flight thinks it's 15-3. That's pretty darn close. I'm probably not going to get any closer than that. And I do have another suggestion for probing your battery. If you can't get right in to the main battery lead itself, you can also use the balance lead. And the way you'd utilize the balance lead, as we'll see here on the China Line Hobby Pack, that I've got a whole bunch of black wires and a red wire. Well, if we probe the outer edges of this connector, and always be careful when you're probing things, you definitely don't want to short. But if I do the two outsides on my connector here, if I can get them in there, we'll see that this is also going to display the correct battery voltage. So if you can't get in there right to the battery lead, maybe try using your balance lead. It's going to work just as good. Keep in mind though that it's the two outer leads on this that is going to display you the correct battery voltage. Well, that's about it. We just calibrated the battery. That was pretty easy. What do you say we move on to the amp meter? Essentially, there's two main ways that you can calibrate your amp meter. Number one is fast and dangerous. Number two is a little bit more tedious, but it's definitely safer. And you also get to fly. So, I mean, come on. If you're burning a couple of packs, even though you're doing some calibration, that's a win, right? So let's talk about the first method really quickly. You can get yourself a DC amp meter, just like this one. And what you would do is you'd clamp it around your power lead. You'd strap your quad to something secure. Uh, I don't know, a box, a milk crate, anything. Uh, but you got to make sure that guy doesn't go anywhere. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be ramping the motors up with the props on to measure the amp consumption with a reliable meter, right? It's pretty dangerous. Not to mention a good clamp meter that is going to be capable of reading a high enough DC amperage is going to be relatively expensive. This particular meter that I have here costs 75 bucks, and this is an inexpensive one. If this is something you're using on a regular basis, yeah, it's worth it, but really with the danger involved in this, if this is all you're going to be calibrating, I definitely would not recommend doing this method. But what makes it really easy is a good accurate meter is going to tell us exactly the amount of amperage that's being consumed. And all we have to do is match that up to what's being used inside Betaflight. And essentially what we would do is we would just increase or decrease our scale until the two numbers matched up. This right here with the current milliamp consumption versus what our meter says. And that's about it. It's quick. It'd probably take you about a minute or two to do this. Um, probably going to take you longer than that to do the setup. But I'm not even going to show you the whole spiel because really I think it's too dangerous and it's not a good idea unless you have a very good handle on what you're doing. Okay, so let's talk about the second method. The second method is going to require us to do a little bit of math. And basically what I do is I create myself a table for all the variables in order to figure out my end result. Our very first step is get a good battery, charge it all the way up, and it is important to know the milliamp capacity on that particular battery because that's what we're going to be using. Now, granted, just because your battery says it's 1300 milliamps, it does not mean that the capacity of that battery is actually going to be 1300 milliamps. It could be slightly more, it could be slightly less. It's going to depend on the condition of that battery, the quality of the cells, the manufacturer. So there is going to be a little bit of variable in this and you're not going to get it 100% accurate, but you're definitely going to get things close enough to be very usable. And as we go, I'm going to explain a little bit more as to why it really isn't going to be 100% accurate. But our first variable is the battery and it's the fact that even though this is a 1300 milliamp battery, its capacity definitely is not exactly 1300 milliamps. But I mean, that's okay. All right, so while our battery is charging, I'm going to show you how to make the chart. I get myself a pad and we're going to make three columns. We're going to make one for milliamp used. We're going to make the second for milliamps charged. And our third column is our scale. Okay, we need to start populating this with numbers. We know our first number, the scale, because we can just simply look right here in Betaflight. I've already adjusted my scale, so I'm going to go back to the original factory default just to show you how I came up with this number. 
write down your starting scale, take your fully charged battery and go fly it. Once you feel that you've exhausted that particular battery pack, the next number that we write down is going to be what our Betaflight OSD says for milliamps consumed. After I flew my battery, Betaflight told me I used 1,063 milliamps out of that battery with a rated value of 1,300 milliamps. Next, we're gonna go charge that battery. Our charger is gonna tell us how much it put back into it, and that's the number we're gonna write down here. So after charging my battery, the charger put in 954 milliamps, all right? These are my first three numbers that I need in order to figure out my new scale for adjustment. The way we figure this out is we're gonna take used divided by charged times scale. So take used, in this case it's 1063, we're gonna divide it by charged, which is 954, and then multiply that by our original scale. 179 equals 199.45, might as well be pi, okay? So we did our math, and unfortunately here we have a decimal value. This is 100% the reason why you're never going to get your consumption completely accurate is because Betaflight is not going to allow you to input a value with a decimal. So this combined with the fact that not all batteries are going to charge to their specified value, uh, those two values is going to throw you off a little bit. And it doesn't mean you can't get this in the ballpark. But again, what it does mean is you're not gonna be 100% accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna take this value of 199 and I'm gonna change my scale in beta flight to reflect this number. With experience, you're gonna use your own discretion on whether or not you should round this number up. I usually round it down unless I'm at the beginning of calibration and the decimal value is real high. If this was like 199.9, I might call this 200 right out of the gate. But for right now, since our decimal value is less than 8 or 9, I'm just going to go ahead and round down. But anyway, we're going to put 199 into the scale. We're going to take our fully charged battery, and we're going to go fly it again. Don't forget to make a note of your new scale on your chart. You're going to need this value for your next equation, and it's just gonna make it a little bit easier to keep track of things as you go. I'm done flying my battery after it's been fully charged, and Betaflight said I used 947 milliamps. Again, I'm gonna completely charge this battery, and we're gonna see what the charger tells me. After a complete charge, the charger returned a value of 941 milliamps. This is pretty darn close. You usually don't end up this close your second time around. I have found that in most cases, you're gonna to have to do this procedure anywhere between three and five times. And right now with a value of 199 for my scale, I'm off by only six milliamps. That's pretty darn close. And I could probably bump my scale up to 200, but I don't know if it's worth it or not because we're talking six milliamps here. I would rather have my OSD display a couple of milliamps higher that have been consumed than to tell me a lower value and me basically over discharging my battery because I'm relying on this meter to tell me what I've used. So I'm happy with this. It usually doesn't work out this quickly. I think Maytex Systems did an excellent job of doing the initial calibration from the factory where they just set their defaults. Usually you're not gonna see a scale value of 179 like that. Typically it's gonna be 400. And because that's like so far off for most cases, that's why you're gonna have to do this three to five times to try to average it in to where you're happy with it. I found most of the time repeating this procedure three times is gonna cover you. 
Uh, and anything beyond that, you start getting out of the range of your number and you kind of end up going back to where you were. Uh, but don't be surprised if you might have to do it a couple other times as well. Really, this is one of these things that you just tweak until you're happy with it and you kind of just get the number as close as you can. It's never gonna be 100% accurate for two reasons. Again, your battery is not going to have the capacity that is advertised. Could be more, could be less. And second, Betaflight doesn't allow us to put a decimal value in for the scale, and therefore it's just gonna throw the whole thing out of whack. That's how you do it. That's how you calibrate your battery voltage and your milliamps. I hope this makes sense. I hope this video helps with your success in calibrating these sensors as they can be very valuable tools. But that's it. That's all I got for today. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.